Hey folks, Dane at Jonah Guitars here, and uh, I've got a ukulele here on the bench. I just noticed there's a little ripple right here. I think that's just bridge stress, possibly. That's that's separated here, actually. So there's another spot to glue down. Um, actually, right here, it's just separated. Uh, right right between the binding and the and the sides so um, this is uh, sentiment mostly uh, it's it's not a player uh, I guess she's got others that she plays uh, but after I didn't really notice when she was there and she didn't say anything she just said it didn't really need to be a player it just needed to be um, stopped from cracking anymore the back you can see there's Pretty, pretty good size crack here. And then also right up here at the top, there is uh, another crack, or actually that's the bottom if you orient it correctly. There's also separation right here um, along the side, uh, kind of coming across from that crack and then just separating down the side. So, um, but I was gonna say, it's, uh, it's got a, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, if I can get the camera to see it that way or not. I can readjust, I'm sure. Uh, maybe. But the neck is twisted in relation to the body. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. So, yeah, you can see that that neck is twisted pretty good. So, um... It, because it's so short and because the strings push so easy, it could probably be played. Um, it has a lot of fret sprout. It is koa. And uh, I'm so, you know, to me, when I think of koa, I think of something pretty, pretty wildly figured. I'm going to turn this back down here. But because of, um, you know, we see all the wild stuff. Now, because that's all that's left, all the burl and different types of koa. Um, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say that this looks a lot like mahogany in the grain structure. So I did want to mention too. This is kind of just a, a brief, although it seems like it's getting longer. Uh, intro here. This was the manufacturer. I'm trying to get into the camera where uh, you can read that. And so, uh, there you have it. And then the front says Aloha Hawaii. So, uh, I don't think these were super upper end, uh, to begin with. Um, I couldn't read it in this. So Sam F. Chang, okay, in, uh, Honolulu, uh, was the company that made these. Anyway... I'm debating since uh, it's it's really not a player, and I think we just want to arrest the the cracking more than anything. Um, and I can push this pretty much flat. Um, so I told the lady that it probably would just end up filling this with with high glue. Colors relatively. Uh, close, but the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, this is a big enough crack that I really should put a piece of wood in it. But I didn't have, I don't have any koa. But I found I have some mahogany um, that is probably about the right thickness this way if I were to clean that up and insert it like so down in the crack. And this one is maybe close enough that we could not, we could uh, get away with just using glue on it. Anyway, the color, uh, when you actually put something on it, I'm going to put a little, uh, a little lighter fluid or naphtha. Hmm. 
you can see that the color is very good, very, very close when you do that. So uh, this mahogany with finish on there would look really good, hardly noticeable. So I think I'm going to go that route, even though uh, that will increase the cost of the repair somewhat. Uh, but I will probably just absorb a lot of that because I've known this lady for a long time. And I just like to do the job right for her. So, yeah, I'll bring you back in when uh, I get into it more. All right, so uh, just one more thing to, to look at, talk about. You can see, look under there, see that crack has a lot of dirt or dust or grime or whatever in there. I'm not sure what, so I'm going to actually put my visor on and look in there and see what all is happening with this. It may be You know what that is, is actually somebody already tried to glue this or fill it. So that's what that is. The other thing to make note of is that this crack is, is on an angle. And so maybe if I lay it down like that, this, this crane is, is cracked on an angle like that. So if I bevel one side and bevel the other side to put the patch in, which would be ideal, so that I can taper the mahogany uh, and you know put it in, and then basically it's a wedge and it fills the gap that way. Uh, but if I were to take this one out far enough to taper it on both sides, it's probably, well, it's going to get a lot wider a lot quicker than I would like. So probably just going to try to clean up the one slanted side, which would be this side, slanting that way, and then uh, see where we're at. And possibly leave this on an angle, but widen it up a little bit so that the, the patch would kind of go in on an angle like that in order to fill that up. The thing I don't want to do is, is uh, get it wedged in there and have this piece be higher than this piece because of it. Right now it is. Right now I've got it pushed down to where it's pretty much smooth out here anyway. It's still a little higher here. So I don't want to have to refinish the back of this. I had kind of been planning on taping the a straight edge down. I'll try to get this door you can actually see here. Try to get it just straight down. There we go. Just straight down. So straight down, you see my monitor. All right, so if I uh, run it, I don't know if I can do this or not. So I taped it down though from one edge to the other edge. You can see that it's not straight. You can't see it that well though, but out here in the middle, I would be taking a lot of wood out to make it straight. And then, inversely, um, let's see, just trying to line that up with the camera, yeah, okay, so the other, I wouldn't be able to hit it all with the straight edge, so I'm just going to freehand this as much as I can. I've already chiseled out, there was obviously, I said crud or corruption or whatever was in there. It was glue. So somebody previously tried to glue this together. Uh, whether they tried to fill it with glue and just let it go or what. And that's kind of uh, why beforehand I determined I wanted to do it. go ahead and use a filler strip of some sort because there's not a uh, not enough I don't think glue with just that much of a gap is going to hold anything. I'm not sure what kind of glue they use though. It it, it chiseled out fairly easily, and, and then I had some on the surface here that I was able just to put the tip of the blade under and pop off. There's also a little pile of something right here that looks like it tried to be glue um, out of the range here, yeah, over in this area. 
uh, although it doesn't look the same as that glue looked. So I'm going to basically try to do this freehand and it's obviously then I'm going to have to fit this stick pretty pretty accurately um, and get that in there and glue it glued in. Um, also, this is a little too thick. I like to use these emery boards uh, as little sanding sticks and uh, I can push this down and open this up a little bit because of the angle. It's still not quite big enough to get in there. So what I'll probably do is take a, a feeler gauge and stick some uh, sandpaper on, on one half of it and put that in and try to just more or less pull it along the, the crack uh, and sand, kind of like you do on a neck joint heel when you're doing a reset and then flip it over and do the same thing on the other. So basically the angle on each side should match uh, because it's, it's uh, I'll push it down to where I'm actually pulling it out with some tension on it. So it should come out at the angle that it needs to be sanded at. I hope that made sense. All right, let me catch you up here a little bit. Um, so this is what I put together to do, uh, do some, well, where's it at? There we go. To do some sanding. So it's a hundred grit sticky disc, uh, on an 11 thousandths feeler gauge, which gave me about 30 thousandths total. The, uh, this thing over here, the emery thing was about 60 thou. So uh, I was able to get in and, uh, file away in there with this and actually get the job done quite quickly. Um, uh, I was testing different kinds of clamps out. I, I have some spool clamps over here that I tried uh, just to kind of exert a little pressure out in this area, but it wasn't. There's a brace going right across here, so and there's a good hump right here where they, the back was misaligned. So I needed to put some pressure right there to push that down. And uh, anyway, and so I've, I'm looking at the way this is all lined. It's lining up really good, basically. Um, I'm just waiting for my glue to heat up. This didn't take as long as I thought it might take to, uh, to get this to fit. And uh, it's obviously... Uh, shaved so block planed and sanded to fit this groove that I created by sanding uh, so right now this is even or even enough there's a little bit of a ripple right here but I'm not going to be able to push that down because it's right at that brace and I can't get and I might I might try to readjust that a little bit uh, and this is a little high but when I put the wedge in it actually I try to get my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing it will actually, uh, once the wedge is in, the wedge actually pulls that down a little bit. And everything seems to line up pretty well. Now that feels really pretty good. And of course I'm up here now. But like I said, I think that I can, that'll push down with the wedge. Yeah, I think we're, uh, we're in good shape there. One more time. Oops. This actually fits over here really well. Barely tapping that thing, by the way. It, you know, it's not easy to. I'm sighting down on either side of this this uh, filler. It looks really good. Now I'm just checking to see. See, so I can push this side down and it just comes away from the filler strip, but then it just rolls right back up to where it needs to be and it looks perfect. So I'm going to go with it. 
feeling really, really confident about that. So I'll just going to turn the camera off and wait for the glue to heat up and then I'll bring you back in and just pop that thing in. Uh, well, before I turn the camera off, obviously this is way, way taller than it needs to be, but it's easier to just hold on to and work with. And so once the glue's dry, I'll, I'll lay a, you know, something like that, a uh, ruler or whatever down and I'll, I'll razor blade this off of here. And then I'll only have a very small amount left to, to take down, either uh, with a small plane or sandpaper or whatever, chisel, you know, just to get close. And then, uh, then I'll have to fine tune it down with uh, probably a razor blade scraper. Let's do it. 140 degrees. Just my fingers will be in the way. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention was that I'm obviously going to get some glue inside the thing and I'm obviously going to have a little bit of this um, um, filler strip uh, inside sticking out a little bit. Not a huge amount, but this isn't anything I'm going to be able to uh, to do anything about because I just I don't I might be able to can you know get some contraption together and get in there and kind of split off the excess inside but I just don't think um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get in there I'm going to put a piece of tape on this end of the, on the butt end because it looks like it's wanting to squeeze itself back out of there. So that should help keep it from wanting to slide. And I'm just looking again to see how it looks. Looks really good from what I can tell. I'm going to uh, get a stick and get some of that off of there. I actually have a piece of edge banding here, <laughs> cabinet edge banding. That uh, I gotta pull this out of the way. I don't know if you can see how this is already gelled up and is peeling right off of here. And uh, what little bit is left, uh, I will be able to uh, just heat this pot back up and, and get most of that, or well, get all of that wiped off. I really like hot hide glue because of it.